Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about a study that came out of the University of Manitoba. And basically, it was looking at the gluten IQ of those with both celiac disease and dermatitis herpetiformis. Uh, dermatitis herpetiformis, if you haven't heard of it before, sometimes it's known as DH because it's less of a mouthful, uh, but it's the skin disease that's associated with being celiac. So uh, people can have the skin condition and um, not necessarily have digestive symptoms, but still have the disease, celiac disease, and still suffer from uh, degradation and villous atrophy in their small intestine. So these researchers took 179 participants, and both of, all of them had either celiac or DH, and basically, they questioned them as to uh, what they knew about gluten. And I guess what was most important about this group was that they considered that they really knew uh, what gluten was and wasn't. Uh, they felt they were very good on their diets, that they really followed them to a T, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is not a casual kind of group. Uh, they felt that they really knew what they were doing. Um, I guess 77% of them pretty much knew what they were doing, but 23%, uh, which is a lot, uh, failed the test. Um, they thought that uh, they didn't know that spelt was a glutinous grain. Uh, and then on the flip side, they, they thought some things that, uh, they thought things that weren't okay actually were okay. So um, specifically, they asked about glutinous rice and so they saw that word gluten and, uh, or glutinous, and they immediately said, oh no, I couldn't have that. Um, but glutinous rice is fine. Uh, rice and corn, there's many grains that have the protein gluten, but, but not the, the protein gliadin that we're trying to avoid uh, when we're gluten-free. So I'm not trying to be confusing, but uh, if you see the word glutinous and then the grain listed right afterwards is not uh, wheat, rye, barley, spelt, kamut, uh, et cetera, et cetera, if it's something like rice or corn, then you're okay. Uh, now, of course, when I say you're okay, I'm, I'm not getting into the broader picture of those individuals who do not do well with grains at all, uh, those people who have a corn reaction or a rice reaction or a cross-reactive reaction uh, to gluten, which many people do have, which I speak of often, but just simply in the strict definition of, of gluten and okay, uh, this particular group of individuals did, did not pass the test, which, of course, they're not alone. They're, they're probably in very good company with a lot of individuals who, who think they know what gluten is and, and what it isn't. And um, uh, what about buckwheat? You see that word wheat in there, and, and you might assume that that means you can't have it when it's perfectly fine, it's not a glutinous grain. Uh, but if you haven't heard of um, things like spelt and kamut because they're not common, or, or farro, or farina, or semolina, uh, words that you just don't see often, and if you haven't really um, kind of schooled yourself to memorize these grains, or put them in your smartphone, do something so that when you see them on an ingredient list, uh, you know that they're not okay. Um, that's, it's very important. It's, it's something that's very worthwhile. So what these researchers found was that these individuals, frankly, did, did not pass the test, and uh, that was obviously affecting their health because as, as good as they were trying to be, if their knowledge base just wasn't up to par, uh, that was going to affect them. And, and what we know is eating gluten when you have celiac disease uh, or gluten sensitivity, it, it's not just a, oops, I don't feel well. This is something that's going to impact you by creating an autoimmune disease or creating cancer, shortening your life, frankly. So there's no exaggeration there that eating gluten can eventually kill you um, if, if you are in this category of someone who shouldn't be eating it. So um, just the moral of the story is that I think we need to be a lot better at it and if you know somebody who has celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, encourage them, please, to either listen to this or just really learn what's okay and what's not. And certainly on the side of thinking something's not okay when it is, th that's not going to get you in trouble. Um, but not knowing what gluten is, as in the case of spelt with 23% of these people, 
there's where the problem lies. If you're not going to eat glutinous rice, that's fine. <laughs> that's not going to hurt you. But if you are going to eat spelt because you don't know it has gluten in it, that's when we have an issue for sure. So I hope this was helpful. Please spread the word and encourage people to, to really learn what they can eat and what they can't. And, and really take that next step when they're out and about at a friend's house or at a restaurant and really query uh, the staff at the restaurant or, or look at a label at a friend's house. You know, it's, it's not rude. This is your health. This is your life. I've gone to friends' houses and, and, and they'll say, oh, you know, I have a, the salad is already dressed, which always gets me worried. They go, no, no, there's no croutons. I'm like, great, thank you. Can I see the salad dressing bottle? <laughs> and I, I said, just if, you know, if I love it, I just want to know so I can get some myself. And that's what I say to be polite, but what I'm really doing is <laughs> looking to make sure there's no wheat flour or any other grain that I can't have in that dressing because bottle dressings are renowned for having a lot of ingredients that they don't need to. Personally, I do olive oil, balsamic vinegar, a little garlic, and you know, sometimes a little mustard, we're good to go. So, um, but things like that, it's okay to say, wow, can I just look at the ingredient list? I'm, you know, I haven't been feeling well and my, my doctor says I have to be perfect on my diet. You know, blame it on your doctor. Whatever you need to do to be comfortable, but it's worth it taking that extra step, okay? So if you have any questions, call me or write me as usual. And uh, until next time, I wish you very good health.